Hey, I'm Evan, head of engineering for RM Stater. Uh, well, it's December here and almost Christmas at RM Stater, and uh, we have a couple presents under the tree for our Sportsman 700, so let's see what we got. All right, we've got a new Stater, and a new voltage regulator, which is exactly what we asked for. So here we have a 2004 Sportsman 700 Twin EFI. Uh, this install should be the same for the uh, Sportsman 800 EFI as well. Um, it's really pretty simple job on this thing. You don't have to drain the oil or the coolant. Uh, the stator cover is dry on this motor, so it's really easy to get to with no extra work. Um, so anyways, to get started, I have already loosened up most of the stuff we're gonna need to get to on this, but on your bike, what you wanna do is get your seat removed, which just unclips at the back, it's easy. Um, remove your side panel here, and remove your footboard. So the footboard comes out with plastic clips, there's four of them at each, or one at each corner, and then you have four bolts that hold it down to the metal base. It's a Torx head uh, with an 11 mil nut, I don't recall the Torx size, but um, anyway, so you remove those four and then you can lift the four, uh, footboard out. Um, before we do the stator though, you want to go ahead and get that stuff removed, but before we do that, we're going to go up to the front and we're going to remove and change the voltage regulator. Um, we need to unplug the stator uh, connector from the voltage regulator harness so we can free up the stator and remove it. So we might as well start at the voltage regulator so we can leave this loose. Um, and route it back out when we take the stator out. Um, up at the front, you need to go ahead and remove your storage tray. There's four bolts inside that hold it to the frame, and then there's a couple Torx head uh, like machine screws that hold it at the back edge uh, on each side. And then there's one bolt on each side underneath. So remove all of those. You'll, you'll see as you start kind of moving it around what needs to keep being loosened. I can't really get a good shot, I think, showing you all of those, so I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna remove the storage tray. Um, but once that's out of the way, we'll show you where the voltage regulator is up front and we'll get everything unplugged and change the regulator. So that'll be the next shot. Okay, so we are up front. We have our storage tray removed. I'm gonna show you some of those mounting bolts in just a second. Um, you also need to remove these plastic panels on both sides of the radiator. And I've already have this one loose, so I'll just take it out of the way. Um, they're held in place with these uh, plastic locking clips. So you can use a screwdriver and some needle nose pliers to lift up the center pin and you can even remove it. And when you do that, you will be able to pull the, uh, the locking part out. And then this is what gets pushed apart when the center pin is in place and wedges it in place. So anyways, um, I've already removed them, but just wanna show you that. They're, they're mounted with three clips on each side. Make sure you remove that because you're gonna need the access to get to the regulator. Okay, here's the main four mounting bolt holes that hold the storage tray down. And I couldn't remember in the last shot, but they're 13 millimeter um, bolts with a washer on them. So those are inside the storage tray going through it to mount it to the frame. And then you can see probably around here on the edges, these are where the Torx head um, bolts or screws are go through and hold it down to the plastics. So now that we have that stuff removed, we can see where the voltage regulator is mounted. So it's mounted to the frame uh, kind of cross member piece in front of the radiator with two Torx head bolts. And you have to come in from the side, which is why we have to remove those plastic panels. So we've already loosened it. So here's our regulator. Um, really easy to unplug. You just have locking connectors for each side. So here's the battery side. Just lift the tab, pull it apart. Stator side, just kind of wiggle it and it pulls apart. So that's it for removing the voltage regulator. And when you install your new one, it goes in just the same way. You wanna slide it down. You're gonna have to hold it in place, come in from the side and get the mounting uh, bolts in each side and tighten them down. And then you can plug in your battery side if you want. You're gonna wanna leave the stator side loose because we're gonna need that to feed it back. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and push it through the frame here. So when we remove the stator, we have the harness loose and we can just pull it through. 
So that's it for the voltage regulator. I'm gonna get it bolted in place and put the front, or not, not put the front back together until I have the stator done, but I'm gonna bolt this back in place so it's ready. And we're not gonna show reinstalling it and all because we can't get a real good shot down in there, but it's pretty straightforward. So now that we have that done and the stator connector's loose, we're gonna go back to the side of the vehicle and we'll show you how to get, uh, get the stator changed. Okay, so one thing I have to mention I, I wasn't aware of in the last shot, but I found while pulling the stator harness through is that there there's two more things that have to be removed because the harness will be tied up here. So I've loosened the plastics just by loosening the mounting clips here and the mounting bolts at the back of the gas tank and that let me just kind of twist the plastics up out of the way a little bit. You do have to remove a Torx head bolt right here which will let you pull a brown ground wire out. It's grounded to the frame right there with the ring terminal that's part of the stator harness. And then you also need to unplug a yellow wire from the stator harness that's a bullet, female bullet terminal, and plugs into this yellow with the red stripe on the vehicle harness. So with those removed, now you can feed the stator harness the rest of the way through. But I needed to make sure I mentioned that because you will get kind of stuck <laughs> trying to pull it back without doing this. Um, I also removed a relay that's mounted right in front of the grounding bolt just to make clearance for it. That'll just plug right back in. And it's keyed so it can only go in one way. Um, okay, just wanted to give you a heads up on that so you can get the stator harness pulled back through so it's loose over at the stator cover. Okay, so here we are over on the right side of the bike at the stator cover area. So to get started, um, we have our stator harness pulled all the way through so it's loose here, so it'll come out easily, just laying down at the side. Um, we wanna go ahead and remove our crank position sensor, which I've already loosened, it's an Allen head, and you can just kinda twist it and it'll come out. So I'm gonna set that out of the way, and I'm just gonna thread that in a little bit. Okay, you're gonna need to remove your brake lever so we have clearance for the cover to come off. Um, it's held in place, there's a couple washers and there is a cotter pin that goes through it, which I've straightened and pulled out. Behind it will be your return spring that clips onto the edge of the bracket and the edge of the lever. So I've already removed it once obviously. And then it'll just slide right off. So you can set those parts out of the way. Sometimes you might need to use a screwdriver or some needle nose pliers to get the spring like unhooked and all, but um, it, it's pretty easy and you'll get it, then it just slides straight off the shaft. Okay, so now we're looking at the side cover of the motor. Um, held in place with 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. They're all the same length, so there's no need to keep them separate. Um, there's four or five of them that hold this plastic outer cover in place, so you can start by just removing those that go through the cover and then you can slide. If it's been on there for a long time, you might need to use a screwdriver and just pry it gently. So we can remove that. Then we'll be looking at the side cover. Um, side cover will have the rest of the same length bolts all the way around and you just loosen those. And then wiggle it around a little bit. It'll pull right off. It will have already removed this, but let me show you. Uh, these don't use a regular gasket, they just use a rubber O-ring that is kind of shaped to fit the side cover. So anyways, I've already removed it because I put the cover back in place, but it fits into a groove in the cover, so it's really easy to reinstall. There's no need to use sealant, RTV, um, just make sure it's in good shape and not cracked or torn or anything, and it'll fit back down in the groove when you're gonna reinstall it. Okay, so now, we're looking at the flywheel and we have to remove that because it sits over the stator on this model. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is remove the nut here. Uh, we're gonna use an impact gun and just regular left hand thread and remove the nut. And then we're gonna get our puller in place which picks up these three threaded holes and we'll use that to pull the flywheel off. So let me get that all set up and then we'll show you how to remove it. Okay, so I have removed the nut on the end of the crankshaft and the washer. Um, this was a, what are we using here, 22 millimeter, and I just use this Harbor Freight electric impact gun. I've had this thing for years, and it, it works fine for m most of this stuff. Sometimes you'll run into stuff that's just too tight for it, but usually works fine for pulling flywheels. Um, so I just use that in reverse to back the nut off and remove it in the washer. Then we have the flywheel sitting there. So. 
we'll set up the flywheel puller. Um, you'll need three bolts that are the right thread. I don't know exactly what pitch it is. It's a metric pitch um, for the thread, but um, we basically line up the three slots on the puller with the three holes, thread in our three bolts. Just make sure they grab. You don't need to thread them in too far because you could actually hit the windings on the stator. So we just thread them in enough that they are getting good engagement in the threads on the flywheel. Okay, and then we'll thread in the center bolt on the puller, and then make sure that the heads on your three bolts are even. So this thing is as straight and squared up to the crankshaft as you can. You don't want to be pulling at an angle at all. But if you're a little bit off, it's not like super critical. It's not the end of the world, but definitely keep it as straight as you can. And then we just use, I've already loosened it, but then once I have everything hand uh, finger tight so there's no slop in the puller bolt, then I'll put the impact gun back on it and give it a couple blasts to tighten up the bolt. And this one took three times and it just tightened up enough and popped right off. Usually that's the case. If you run into one that's really badly rusted or something, you could have a more difficult job getting the flywheel off. Um, a couple tips for that situation. Um, the best thing I've found to do if you have a really, really stubborn flywheel, don't keep whaling on it with the impact gun and the puller because you're likely to just strip the threads in the puller eventually. The best thing to do is to keep tightening and so you have really, really tight pressure sitting here on the flywheel. Now, obviously I have this all loose. I can't really show you exactly, but you would, you would tighten it up usually with a wrench, I wouldn't use the impact gun anymore. Tighten it up so you have like a lot of pressure on it, really tight. And then while it's sitting there, I would take a hammer, um, like a, a little like handheld, like five pound sledgehammer is great for this, and just whack the end of the puller bolt and give it like two or three good taps. You don't need to just wail on it, but give it a really sharp jolt with the hammer. And a lot of times that's all you need to break the press fit of the flywheel on the crankshaft. And don't get discouraged if it doesn't work the first time. Do that, you know, five, ten times. Keep trying because all you need is that one jolt that'll break it loose. So anyways, hopefully that helps. Usually they come off just like this. You saw this one even had a little bit of rust on the nut on the outside and it still came off super easy. So usually it's not a big deal. Okay, get that out of the way. Then you can just grab the flywheel and you're fighting the magnet, so you have to walk it off of the crankshaft. And just like that, it'll come off. You can set it out of the way. Make sure you don't lose the woodruff key, which is the little half moon flat key here. That's what locks and keys the crankshaft um, to the flywheel. So usually they're pressed in tight and they're not gonna fall out, but they can, so just make sure it stays there. All right, then we have our stator here and we're ready to replace it. Um, we just have three Allen bolts here that we need to remove. That'll loosen the stator from the, uh, the motor. And then we're gonna have to remove, I think they're 10 mil bolts here, to remove the backing cover that keeps the wires out of the way. Once that's done, we can just grab the whole stator, pull it out, and then we'll put our new one in place and we'll make sure to use red Loctite on all of these mounting bolts so none of them can rattle loose. Um, you can also, to make some more room for yourself, you can just pull the starter clutch mechanism right out. It just slides out of the way. And I think there is a washer on the back of it, so don't drop that. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. I'll get the new stator in place, and then we'll show you putting the flywheel back on. Okay, so we have our new stator in place. I don't think I said the Allen size earlier, but that's a five mil Allen head for these bolts. So stator is bolted back in place. Um, I've used red thread locker um, on all these three bolts and the backing plate the wire backing plate bolts to make sure they don't have to come loose. And I've got them all tightened up. I have my wire routed right here behind the backing plate to the grommet. I tighten these up, 10 mil bolts here for the backing plate. Um, I put the starter clutch assembly back in place. And let's see. And then I've got my grommet in place and I have the wires routed out and they're just hanging on the other side of the bike yet, or, or for the moment. I haven't routed them up to the front yet. But we're not gonna show that it's basically what you did before when you removed them. So we're just gonna route them up the side of the bike the same way and plug them into the voltage regulator. Okay, so we're gonna reinstall our flywheel now. So when you look at your flywheel, you'll see the notch inside it, and that is the keyway for the Woodruff key, which is what we talked about earlier, the little key in the crankshaft. So I'm gonna look at the slot so I know where it's located. I'm gonna look at the key and I might have to move this around 
a little bit and brighten the magnets and all so you can take a couple tries. And there we go. And then you'll you'll you feel it fall in line on the key, and then it'll kind of pull itself into place with the magnets. So there's there's not too much there. The um, the starter assembly um, doesn't mesh. Actually, I guess this is a bit mix because it throws out to engage with the flywheel. So it's out of the way. The teeth don't need to mesh or anything. So I have that in place. Going to take the washer, put it back in, take the nut, get it threaded in. It's, this one's a little rusty. I don't like it, but Okay, I'm use my impact gun to get that tightened up. Okay, so I have it flush now against the flywheel, and I'm just going to give it a couple more cranks to make sure it's fully seated. I'm watching the socket here to see how much turn I'm getting. So I have that pulled in all the way. Everything looks good. There's no movement of the flywheel. It's pulled on tight on the taper. I can see clearance with the stator, so everything looks great. Okay, so now that that's done, I can go ahead and put the side cover back on. Um, I'm going to not film that whole thing. It's going to take me minutes to get it lined up, and I don't want to waste your time. But what I'm going to do is take the side cover. I'm going to have to lay it down here and get the rubber uh, sealing ring, I guess you'd call it, pressed into place. And it's got little ridges in here that should kind of hold it in place. So just take your time and work it all the way around and make sure that it seats down into it. I'm pretty sure this one has never been off before, so it definitely seems to have like stretched out or flattened out a little bit when I had it off. But there we go. So I just pressed it down. You see it's got these little teeth on the inside that kind of grab it and it should help you locate it in place. And then I'm just going to line everything up and slot it back in and you'll you'll feel it. Oh, I guess I'm going to take that off. I had a washer from the starter assembly that was stuck on the inside. So just to make sure I don't lose it, I'm going to place it back on the shaft up here. Um, line it up. I have to move it around a little bit to get the starter assembly lined up. There we go. Okay. So that's it. That's in place. I'm going to put the plastic cover back in place. And then I'm going to grab all of the bolts for now. I'll just grab it here to show you. I don't use thread locker on these because they generally don't come loose. And they wouldn't be catastrophic if they did. So. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put those in all the way around. Like I said earlier, they're all the same size, so there's no problem uh, mixing them up. I'm going to remove the thread on the crank sensor and get it into location here. Drops into the cover, put its bolt back in place. And I'll tighten that up, and then let me grab the brake piece. So, here's the pieces of the brake assembly. Um, I'm definitely not going to be able to finalize this because there's too many pieces, but I'm going to press the, I have the washer piece that came out, or I guess you call it a bushing that this rides in, the inner bushing still in place. So I'm going to put that in the outside. The whole thing will slot over the shaft like that. The little tab here needs to be behind the piston right there for the rear brake. Then you have another washer and then you have your cotter pin. Okay. What I didn't show you was the spring because I, I, I'm going to have my hands in the way. I can't really show you that clearly. But before putting all this on, you have your spring that sits right here and you see it has two teeth on it or two hooks. So it's going to sit on the shaft. One of the hooks goes underneath the pedal bracket right here. The other hook grabs on the top of the mounting bracket. 
So with those two in place, when you press this, you're extending the spring and it's going to want to pull this back out to the resting position. So let me get that into place and then we'll show you what it looks like with all this button. Down. Okay, so we have the side of the motor back together. See, we have all our bolts tight on the case. We have the plastic cover and the inner cover. We have our crank position sensor tight and brake is back in place with the spring in place. So if you can see it, the spring hooks right here on the edge of the pedal bracket and then it hooks on the inner bracket right here. And that's what lets it return when you press it. Okay, so that's the side of the motor back together. Um, we have now routed our stator wiring, so we'll do one more shot from the front and show you the stator plugged into the regulator and remind you to connect the ground wire and the, the yellow wire at the front of the harness. And that's about it. Then you put your bodywork back on. So we're gonna show you one more shot at the front and then we'll, we'll get the bodywork back on and then we're gonna check the charging system, which you should do anytime you're working on these kind of parts. Okay, so here is our stator harness, um, just tied up where it, it came from along the side of the frame. We have the yellow wire that splits off here and it's plugged into the yellow red on the vehicle's harness. And then we have the brown ground wire that splits off right here. And let me pull this relay back out of the way so you can see it clearly. There we go. And then we have all of our brown ground wires tied to the frame right there. Okay and then I'll put this relay back in a minute. Have the stator harness running up here, plugged into the regulator connector, and the battery side of the connector is plugged into the harness as well. So I'll tie, tie these together here just to keep them tight, and that's it for the, uh, the wiring. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get the bodywork put back on, and then we'll show you how to check the charging system. Okay, so anytime you're doing any work on the charging system, you want to check it uh, when you're done and make sure everything's working well. So we have the whole uh, vehicle back together. We have our battery tester clipped onto the battery so we can monitor the voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Um, we should see over about 14 volts. Uh, the regulator will regulate at about 14.6 volts, but this has a discharge battery from sitting for a while, so we're probably going to see like low 14s. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Okay, great, so we're idling close to 13, that's great. So that's great, we're seeing 14.2 volts by about, that was about 3,500 RPM. So that says our charging system's working well, our regulator's working well. So um, anyways, yeah, that's how you install a, a stator and a regulator on a Sportsman 700 EFI twin. Um, and the install's the same on the 800. So anyways, hope this helps. You can do it yourself. And uh, it's a great way to upgrade your vehicle and, and get it back into action if you had a failed charging system. Check out rmstator.com for all of our products and any news and information. Thanks.